Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to January faves and fails. What a month, what a month. Looking at the products I have in front of me, what a month it's been. There's been highs and lows, holy grails and holy fails. Let's start talking about it. So as per the usual, I'm going to start off with the beauty related items that aren't necessarily makeup because, you know, that's just how I like to do things. I am a creature of habit, if nothing else. So if you watched my last haul video, I had a big package from Yes Style, a PR package that I chose everything myself from there. The only thing I've really busted out so far, because it takes me a while to go through my skincare, I have a lot, and I use it in order that it was sent to me or that I purchased it to, you know, keep things fresh. I do have a system in place, let's put it that way. The first thing that I cracked out of that haul from Yesstar that I'm obsessed with, as I expected to be, are the eye patches. The brand is Jejun, tell me if I'm not saying that correctly, but these are the green tea eye gel patch. What I really find with like Korean skincare brands is they just do like packaging and little touches so well. They all come with these little spatulas that you can just see there in the lid. I feel like every Korean skincare brand does that and I flip and love it. So these are, I don't want them to fall out, but hopefully you can see the gel patches in there. They have these little tea leaf speckles and I just think they're so pretty. They smell like stunning, like stunning, like sweet tea. That what reminds me of a Lipton iced tea. That's the closest thing I can think of. I've started whacking these on just willy nilly constantly. I like them in the morning while I'm doing my skincare, I whack these on first, do the rest of my skincare and just feel extra bougie. I whack them on in the bath, I whack them on in the evening and anytime I don't have makeup on and I'm not leaving the house, I do have my limits. I don't wear them outside, I promise. And I just love them. I just find them so hydrating and they just feel divine. This is more of like a self-care item for me. I just love the feeling of it. I feel awake, fresh, my under eye area feels less baggy and like tight and it just feels wonderful and I just am living for them. Highly recommend. The only other skincare item I have to talk about this month that I've been obsessed with is this Versed Sunday Morning Antioxidant Oil in Oil Serum, Oil Slash Serum oil dash serum. So this, I don't know if you can see this is separated at the moment. You give this a shake up as so. And it basically makes a very light, watery, thin serum. I typically avoid anything with the word oil in it. I don't like facial oils. I just find them a bit slimy, greasy. I don't like oily feeling skin, especially my skincare, because either I'm going in them with makeup and it doesn't feel nice, causes issues, or I'm going to bed and I'm a side slash front sleeper and I just don't want it all over my pillow. I feel like it ends up all over my pillow instead of my skin. So I have, I put off using this. I had this for a long time. It's like the last product that Verse sent me that I have got around to using. And I used it specifically when my skin had went through that whole flare up that was caused by either a reaction or whatever it was caused by, who will ever know. And I was just putting this on when like throughout the day. So I'd had my moisturizer in the morning and then a few hours later I was whacking this on and I just started loving it. There's no grease or slimy or oily feeling at all. It feels like it's absorbed, but it just kind of keeps my skin feeling a bit more hydrated throughout the day. And I've really been enjoying it and appreciating it for that. I also use it if I have had a big gap between skincare and makeup to kind of refresh and just feel a bit more hydrated again before going in with makeup, like maybe I got up, I did my skincare, then I went to the gym and had a shower and instead of redoing all my skincare, I'll just whack a bit of this on and go about my day and I really enjoy it. Now next up we have three, count them, three fragrances to talk about because it was Christmas, okay? It was Christmas, so that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So first up, let's talk about the Dior Tobacco Law. So this has been on my kind of to buy list for a while. You guys know that I really like tobacco in my fragrances and I really like a absolute beast of a performance when it comes to my fragrances. My fra I really repel or absorb, not really sure which, fragrance. It doesn't last on me. I need really excellently performing fragrances. Otherwise, it's just gone within half an hour and no one, let alone me, can smell it. So I had heard that not only was this an excellent tobacco fragrance, but it was also a beast mode of a performer 
extra good longevity and great sillage, so of course it went on my list and I picked it up. And I do enjoy it. This is, it's a little too linearly tobacco to be a love of my life. It is very much a tobacco fragrance without a lot of other notes going on in there. It's very strong, it's very potent. It is very typically traditionally leaning masculine as opposed to being a unisex fragrance. So you do have to love that real strong, heady, heavy tobacco, which I do but it's not a love for me. I do like it and I will wear it. And it's more of a like, I like to wear it around the house. If I'm not really going out anywhere, I like to wear it. I like, it makes me feel comforted, warm and cozy, but it's not like a favorite for me. It is just a little, even for me, too strongly tobacco without any kind of balancing factors for like just what I prefer. But I do enjoy it. It has its moments, especially during the winter, but I feel like during summer months, I just won't use it at all. Next up, one that I talked about in another favorites, possibly December, could have been November. I struggle to remember. Remember, remember, was it December? We don't know. But this is Anishio's Rehab. This was one of the fragrances that I had in my sponsored video where uh, Unique You sent me some samples to try and this was one of my absolute favorites from those that I tried. I'm a sucker for Anishio. It has firmly become my favorite fragrance house. I just find the fragrances from Anishio are just exceptionally well blended. You can't really pull out specific notes. You just get this incredibly smooth experience of all of them at the same time, if that makes sense. And this is no exception. It's so silky and smooth. This fragrance, it's yes, musky, yes, a hint of tobacco-y. It's got some sweetness, but in no way an obvious like gourmand, just smells like vanilla or it just smells like honey or anything like that. There's just like this underlying edge taken off of those harsher notes. It's so different and unique to me. I find it very comforting and soft and feminine and delicate and just like being surrounded by a cloud of deliciousness. I love it. It's so beautiful and very unique and I find it very sophisticated. And next up, my latest fragrance that I picked up, another from Initio. You can tell I'm falling in love with this brand. I want all of their fragrances now. This is Oud for Greatness. I talked about this in my haul video. <laughs> I can't even just sniff the bottle now without just going on a journey of delight, okay? This fragrance within a couple of days of me picking it up and just wearing it, obviously, became my absolute signature scent. Forget all of my other, don't forget them. I still love and use a lot of them, most of them, but this is it for me. This, I have found the love of my life, my signature, can't ever imagine being without it now. It's my all time favorite. It's the sexiest, most beautiful, smell I have ever smelled in all my days. I cannot tell you how beautiful this is. I don't know that I ever thought I, of myself as an oud lover or someone who really wanted to go after oud fragrances. Something about this reached out to me and told me to pick it up and it was made for me. It is the perfect sweet spot between being unique, different, woodsy, sexy, smoky, warm, spicy, and light and fresh, but the performance on this, days, days. I can smell this on myself all day long. I can get little wafts of it all day long and the next day through a shower, through the gym. It's stunning, but it isn't like loud, but it just, you can just smell it forever. It's just an absolute stunner, the best I've ever tried. There's that. That's all she wrote. So now we're here, we're on to the makeups. We've found our way through the hay. <laughs> Just because it rhymes doesn't mean it makes sense. So we are very lip heavy today. I can only apologize. It's just the way that it goes. I feel like I say that every month. Every month is lip heavy, no? So let's start off and get cracking with these lips. First up, we have the Chanel liquid lipstick, one of the double, what are they called? Double, 
double tenue is that right is that even in the ballpark we don't know daring red this was a recommendation from you guys i did a favorite red lipstick video and multiple people of you guys were shouting at me in the comments you must try this one and i wore this on christmas day we got up christmas day we did presents we did stockings we did all of the just the buzz and the delight and the joy of kids at christmas ugh just the heart was melting. We did that and then we let them play with their toys and everything while I did my makeup. Then we got in the car and we went to my sister's who lives by the beach and we went to the Christmas day swim, the Santa swim, which is insane. Like people actually go in the sea and swim, including my brother-in-law in a onesie at, on Christmas day. I mean, you, madness then we went back to the house of course we ate ourselves silly and we drank ourselves silly this is the lipstick i had on all day it looked insanely good it went through the entire obstacle course that is christmas day for a lipstick and it looked phenomenal and yeah you guys were right I can trust you. Next up, the ABH lippies that came out this month. I did a whole review on all of these. I think I picked up four or five. My absolute favorites are Peach Amber, which is just the perfect peachy nude for every day, and also Soft Brown. These are a kind of satin finish. They're not super shiny, but they also aren't matte. They're nice and comfortable. They're very easy to wear, very everyday friendly, no issues whatsoever. They haven't like blown my mind, blown me out the water or anything like that, but they are a nice satin formula, lots of great shades to choose from. A great job from ABH. And the first product from ABH that I've been interested in for a long time, so that's good news. I also picked up a couple more shades from Max Powder Kiss range. I do, I have liked these, when they first came out, I did enjoy them, but they kind of went off my radar a little bit. And then I saw a TikTok, I believe, from, I forget who it was from, but she was wearing Max Sultry Move Powder Kiss. So I've just swatched it here and it just looked amazing. And it made me want to re-explore and get a couple more shades of these. And this is Impulsive. So Impulsive and Sultry Move. Let's show you closer, for goodness sake. So here we have Peach Amber Soft Brown from ABH. Obviously the Chanel speaks for itself up there. And then we have Impulsive and Sultry Move. These are a very unique formula. They are a matte but they don't dry down. They have a slight sort of sheen to them, and but they are just so soft, and they have this like cloudy sort of appearance to them, a really just beautiful, like satiny plump pillow effect to the lips. They look truly beautiful. They do need a liner for me to just give a bit of dimension, otherwise it's like your lips get a bit lost on your face. But with a liner, these like give you that like lip filler look. They just really do emphasize like the soft plumpness, the juiciness of your lips, but in a matte formula, they wear really nicely. They smell really weird like rubber but then if you do taste them they taste somehow really fruity so it's very confusing experience on the palette but i don't know why that's important so let's stop talking next up i picked up one of the charlotte tilbury lunar new year lipsticks i've picked up the wrong one <laughs> here it is this is the shade blah, 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 talk among yourselves only muse hmm lots are going on today why does this video always end up chaotic every month but this was the only shade that i was kind of interested in usually i buy the whole lot of lunar lipsticks but this one was the only one that i felt like was reaching out to me and it is a very beautiful peachy nude shade is this it is a matte but it's one of like charlotte tilbury's it's more comfortable matte so it does have a bit of shine and it is a much deeper as you can see sort of richer peach than like some of these others that i swatched there you can see how much richer that one is stunning packaging as well absolutely love that gorgeous and it is her refillable component as well so if you didn't really like the shade you could always keep the component and put a more preferred shade in there which i like i love that about these components love a refill next the chanel coco rouge rouge coco balm that i picked up and reviewed in my recent trying new makeup video this is again a like i said it in the video it's a like it's a nice 
balm formula tinted balm it's not my favorite tinted balm formula i prefer a richer creamier type formula when it comes to these types of lipstick these sort of balm hydrating lipstick with some color it has enough color i need to wipe my lips clear of foundation but then it just gives me a your lips but better very natural appearance i do find that if i wear this all day my lips are actually a little dry at the end of the day so i don't feel like it's that balmy and hydrating as it claims to be my lips definitely feel dried out by the end of the day if i'm wearing this versus some of the other more hydrating types of these lipsticks so it's not it's not my favorite it's neither here nor there it's nice it's decent but it's nothing to write home about but I don't feel the need to like make a press release phone my mum tell a friend although I'm telling all of my friends here so maybe I do feel that need and now I've left I mean look at me I look like I've gone makeup shopping again at Selfridges and this is how I've come out but it is what it is now I've left the best till last this is the shade that is on my lips right now and it's from Charlotte Tilbury and it's not even a new shade it's one like really old in fact this is stoned rose why I'm very cross with you guys I'm very cross why did not one of you ever tell me about this lipstick what have you what are you what are we even doing here no one not one person has ever told me I like this or that I need this lips. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use this, talk about this. This is one of my favorite lip colors of all time. I don't even know why I bought it. I think I was looking for a dupe or something. I was on Temptalia and I was going through the lipsticks. I don't remember why, but this one popped up from Charlotte Tilbury and I was thinking, oh, this must be a limited edition. I don't really remember hearing about it or seeing anyone use it. So anyway, I was looking at the swatches and I thought that's beautiful. And when it arrived, I think it's the name because it's called Stone Rose. You assume it's going to be a rose, but it's definitely a peachy nude it is everything here she is here the shot do you see that shine the shine is everything i love the charlotte tilbury kissing formula this is such a stunning shade i wish i'd known about this sooner and i don't know what you guys why weren't you telling me about this were you trying to keep it a secret for yourselves i don't know but i'm cross okay well although but then you did tell me about the Chanel. So maybe it's balanced out and I'll let you off on this occasion. But next time, tell me about these things, please. This Chanel lipstick's here forever now, so we'll just have to pretend that we can't see it for the rest of the video, okay? <laughs> so next up, let's talk about this mini palette, this mini Bieber palette from Natasha Denona. This is what I'm wearing on my eyes right now. I had this, I feel like I've had this, I don't know, a few weeks, a month, who knows, a year? Definitely not. But this came out along with the little blush highlight duo, which I didn't really feel like I needed. I definitely didn't feel like I needed this either, but I did want to kind of give you my thoughts on it. And here's my thoughts. If, like me, you are a very basic makeup lover, this is gorgeous. Very easy. The mattes in here are absolute butter they blend so beautifully and effortlessly and this is one of the i think this this shade is the cream powder formula just gorgeous the shimmer is stunning you guys know that i fell in love with the glam face palette the light eyeshadows in that palette are stunning this is like as close to that as possible. This shimmer is just delightful, but it is quite loose and crumbly. I feel like you can see in there, it is definitely crumblier, looser pressed in there. So although the size kind of lends itself to, you know, throwing in your hand in your handbag or, you know, taking for the weekend to your family or whatever, it's, I feel like this shade isn't gonna survive a few wax okay or drop in the bag because it, it is I wouldn't trust it it does definitely kind of crumble a little that being said it's stunning on the eyes here is a close-up on my peepers so you can see that shine it reminds me of the shades in the light glam face palette that I spoke about I love it's not the, the exact same I definitely prefer if they made that into a five pan, it's the most glorious five pan Natasha Denona has ever done. But this is definitely my favorite of the neutral five pans. I prefer this to mini glam, for example, or mini nude. I think the formulas in here are excellent. And I just love how it all comes together. Yes, it's gonna give you a very basic look. Yes, if you have Bieber, you absolutely don't need the mini Bieber. But if you want a bit of Bieber for a lot less money, 
can't really go wrong. Next, let's talk about this Bridgerton palette. This was a big surprise for me. I said in my video where I was trying to make up and I used this for the first time that I was like, a really anti-climax because it just took so long to arrive and I had just kind of gone off of it, got bored of it, got fed up waiting for it and wasn't excited about it anymore. I think also in a lot of the reviews I'd seen of people using this palette, the looks had turned out very pink. And I think if you have a fairer skin tone, this will pull much more pink on lighter skin tones and much more muted the deeper your skin tone gets if that makes sense. So I think because I watched a lot of fairer skinned beauties reviewing this, the looks were coming out very pink and on me they're much less fuchsia and a bit softer and more subdued and so I get a bit more of a rosy look than a bright pink which really was a pleasant surprise. The blue really surprised me. I thought it was looking a little more silvery, less blue. Again and a lot of swatches and things I was seeing. I actually love it. I think the formulas in here are excellent again and it really surprised me how pretty it is. This blue really is gorgeous and does actually pull really nice and blue. You see that? You see that? And again, this shimmer in the middle is just right up my street. Absolute gorgeous. So shiny. The matte in here, again, is gorgeous. These two shades, beautiful satins, the perfect little inner corner. I think it's a lovely palette and I was pleasantly surprised. I just wish it had arrived quicker, but you know, you can't have everything, I guess. Next up, let's talk about Peche Rosé from Chanel, this gorgeous blush that is now like sold out everywhere. Thank flipping goodness I didn't hang about because as soon as this came out here, I was like jumping all over it because I was desperate to get my hands on it. I really felt like this was going to be like my favourite blush ever. It just looked like it was going to tick every one of my boxes and I do love it. A lot of people weren't sure if it's going to show up on me. I am wearing it today. I've just put that on a wet hand, which was a mistake. So we've caused some problems, but you can see it's just a perfect, subtle, orangey, peach, luminous blush. I do wish it had, it was for me personally, I wish it was a bit darker. It had a bit more color to it on me just because obviously in summer. I don't think this is going to really show up on me. I use it very heavily now and it's very soft and subtle and it's beautiful and I think it's gorgeous but it, I won't really be able to use it I don't think in summer but at the same time that means it's perfect for people with fairer skin tone to use and it's much easier for you to use so I just think it's for a more fair to medium skin tone. I do have to use a lot and I do have to really build it up but that being said, it is super gorgeous. I love how just easy going it is. It's exactly what I hoped it would be. An absolute favorite straight in the top drawer. Now let's talk about this Tom Ford soft matte, traceless soft matte, in fact, primer. I again used this, demoed this in my trying new makeup video and I was unsure because I used it with a new foundation. Actually, what's going on? Is this the primer? Is this the foundation? So I have now tried this with a couple of other foundations. I tried it with the Lisa Eldridge foundation and I tried it with my Tom Ford foundation. So two foundations plus the Chanel foundation I used in that video. And I absolutely love this primer. I said in my makeup resolutions video that I wanted to find a new holy grail primer this year because Tatcha is so hard to get here, so expensive to get to the UK that it's just time to let it go and move on and try to find a new one that I love as much or even more than the Tatcha. And I think we've done it. So just to clarify, before everyone starts commenting it in the comment section, I know that there again are these rumors that Tatcha is coming to the UK, uh, but we don't know when. And I have been hearing this same rumor for several years now, and I have seen on Tatcha's own socials them saying things like, oh, we're trying really hard to make this happen. Oh, hopefully we're, and it's all very, very vague and loose. And that's how they've always kind of answered that question. So it's not that I disbelieve it. The rumor has come from Caroline Hirons saying that, yes, they are coming to the UK, but she never said when. And so I do believe her. I do believe that she knows they are coming. And I really hope that means it's going to be in the next month or so. But I am taking it with a slight pinch of salt at the moment because I have been hearing this for literally years and Tatcha themselves are being very vague. So it could be longer rather than sooner. Later? Later. It could be later 
rather than sooner is my my fear. But anyway, it, it matters not now because this primer, I feel, is going to replace the Tatcha, my absolute top spot. It's so lovely to apply. It starts off when you pump it out like a serum, feels very like fresh and hydrating and cooling. And it's almost like it thickens up as you're kind of, you know, massaging it into the skin, working it into your skin. It's almost like it's thickening up and it's just really giving you a beautiful, smooth appearance to the skin. It's instantly kind of takes any shine and oiliness down from the skin, tones it down, and it just becomes this stunning, smooth, soft focus veil that I wouldn't say is matte, it's that soft matte word again. It's more like it just takes the edge, the shine, the excess away, and just gives you this stunning, gorgeous canvas to work with. Now, I said in my video that, that my skin that day looked like the best I'd ever seen it, but I wasn't sure if the foundation was just incredible and it had nothing to do with the primer. It definitely had something to do with the primer because I have now tried this with other foundations that I know very, very well, and they definitely look like even more perfected when I used it with this. So yeah, it's a great primer. I really love it. It smells divine. The whole process feels like a spa day. And I just feel like when I use this under my foundations, foundations I already love, foundations that are already excellent, it just gives me an extra flawless finish. There's just something magical about this under foundations that gives me extra smooth, flawless, filtered look on the skin. And I've not had as yet any issues with pilling or it not working with the foundation, but I have only used it with three foundations. So more work needs to be done before I make a final decision. And if Tatcha do suddenly pop up, we've got a battle on our hands, let me say. We've got a battle. Who will I repurchase first? Drama. I just love the drama, Mick. So let's talk about said foundation from Chanel, the number one Chanel foundation that I talked about in that video was glorious, stunning. Everybody was drunk from playing drink every time Charlotte says smooth because it was so smooth, smooth, so smooth, smooth as satin, smoother than the smoothest smooth thing you can think of. You tell me. It was so flattering, so plump, healthy, glowing, fresh, youthful, hydrated. My skin has just drunk three litres minimum of water from a natural spring top of a mountain. That's what my skin looked like, exactly that. Maybe it also was raining, but a fine summer's rain. You know, that's what my skin looked like after these two had finished with it. So I used this today on top of my Tatcha liquid silk canvas to see, and it's still glorious. It's still very beautiful. It still looks smooth, fresh, glowy. All of those words I just said, I don't think it looks quite as good as it looked in that video. Let's you be the judge. If you watched my trying new makeup video where I used these together, is it just me or did it look better in that video over the top of the Tom Ford? I think it did. I think it did. That's just a shadow, by the way. There's no ghost on my face. It's just a shadow. But yeah, it does it look gorgeous, beautiful, smooth, healthy, flattering, luminous? Yes, but I think it looked better with the Tom Ford. You tell me. Let's vote. So those are my thoughts. I'm still loving it. I think it's gorgeous. I don't think it wears incredibly well without being set. I think if you don't set it on a normal skin type, certainly an oily skin type, you're going to get shinier throughout the day, like an, on an eight hour day. My sort of forehead, although it was a challenging day with a gym session and a swim session, not me swimming, watching swimming in the very hot swimming pool. There was definitely, my forehead was shinier than I would have liked it to be at about the five or six hour mark. It didn't look any worse at eight hours, but I would have liked it to be less shiny. It definitely moved closer to shiny town than I like to visit. Uh, so yeah, there's that. I think on oilier skin tones, you will definitely need to set it and it may still be just too much shine, glow, for show. But on a normal day for me, it will be absolutely fine. Unset, if I wanted to just avoid a slight 
edge of that shine. Yes, I could set it, but I think it's gorgeous and I will definitely keep you posted as to how my love grows and blossoms. Another foundation from this month, the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. Now, I need to revisit this foundation and I need to try it with this primer before I can tell you which of these two I like the best because at the moment I'm inclined to say the Chanel because of that perfected, smoother silk finish that the Charlotte Tilbury has all of the other juicy skin, the plumping, the gorgeous luminous glow but I don't think it was quite as smooth and flattering on like texture and lines and just my face in general as the Chanel. But having said that, I haven't yet tried this one with this primer. I haven't had time. I've been trying my best. I've been going through trying to compare this one to this one and trying that with that. It's, there's not been enough days in the week. So I am still playing around with that. But this is a beautiful skin foundation. Mm the puns. It's very natural, healthy, glowing, luminous, the perfect amount of coverage that I like and I think it does wear beautifully. Lots of people asking me to compare this to the Estee Lauder Futurist foundation. I like this more. One, because it doesn't have the SPF which causes some problems and makes it not evening friendly. Two, because this is much more flattering on my forehead and my just my lines in general. It doesn't just sit in those lines on my forehead like the Estee Lauder does. I think it's gorgeous. It's very like my type of foundation. As I said, I'm working on my like kind of rankings and summary of all these foundations in comparison to my existing foundations, but I do need to do a thorough job. Otherwise it's just useless. If it's not a thorough job that type of video and you haven't really tried them back and forth and back and forth in different days, it's very hard to give a definite, this one's better than this one. I like that one more than that one. So I have to take my time, please be patient. So next let's talk about a controversial launch this month, the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Eyes to Mesmerize. This was a roller coaster, this video, and I've seen a lot of reviews since mine um, that have gone way worse than, than it went for me. Like these, I think, are, are just very divisive because I have seen people love them. I have seen people love them, um, but not many people. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people hate them. A lot of people hate them. I think these are for a specific type of person, a specific type of makeup, and that's not everybody. I was disappointed with the nude cashmere. This was definitely disappointing because I thought I was going to use this like soft ochre paint pot was back in town. I used soft ochre paint. Bleh. I used soft ochre paint pot from MAC Tongue Twister for years as my eyeshadow primer, my eyeshadow base. And I thought this was going to be the new soft ochre. First of all, the colour is slightly off. It's closer to painterly. It's more pinky beige than a sort of yellow or neutral creamy tone, which is what I kind of hoped for. So the color is slightly off, but it's just a much thicker formula. These definitely kind of melt if you work them into the skin, or if you were to like scoop some out and warm it up on the back of your hand, they definitely warm up and you can kind of use them not as thickly and not in such a heavy dry way than if you just apply them straight on the lid but that in itself is tricky because you know if you're a makeup artist I'm sure that's probably how you work anyway to keep hygiene and things so you could get a spatula get some out on a palette you know warm it up and then apply it in a light way that's a lot of faff really for products that are designed or that really tick the box of a one and done a quick five minutes of makeup that's where I feel like what people want from these, you know, and therefore that kind of takes away the ability to do that if you've got to really warm it up and work it into the skin. So that for me was like a fail. It didn't do what I was hoping it did. But the other two I liked, especially Smoky Taupe. Um, was it a lot sort of drier feeling than I was expecting? Yes, definitely, as I said in the video. But actually when I applied it to the skin and worked it in, I didn't have any issues. I think the color was beautiful and quite unique. They're not really my type of product. You know, I'm not really a, a cream person or a one and done shadow pot 
person. I, I love a good palette, but I could definitely appreciate them. And I think they performed very well. They're very long wearing, etc. I know a lot of you guys were commenting on my review that you felt it looked patchy, which I didn't really see. I didn't have any, feel like I had any issues blending out. Maybe it's just my lack of ability. I don't know, but I didn't feel like it was tricky to apply them. I didn't feel like they were hard to blend or anything like that. If you work quickly, I think they're nice. And I just think they suit a specific type of person and that's not everybody. I think in summary, lots of people are really struggling with these. Lots of people are really not getting on well with these. I had a pretty decent experience with the two deeper shades. Lots of people really finding them very patchy, hard to blend and problematic. I just feel like, you know, for that reason, you're probably better off just skipping them. There's lots of these formulas out there, lots that seem a bit easier to work with. So yeah, I think they just kind of slightly missed the mark. Speaking of missing the mark, one of my most disappointing purchases of late. Chanel La Comet blushes, specifically this one, which is Peche Cosmique, because as you can see, it's just very, very light. The embossing on the powder is almost gone already. As we've spoke about in the review, this is actually lighter than the colour of my hand. I have yet to see anyone be able to use this as a blush, even the fairest of the fair. The other shade, this is the shade Corella Toile, I like. It's not stunning, it doesn't knock my socks off. It's a nice blush, but it doesn't really have much that excites me about it. The finish is nice, the shade is quite nice, the pigment is nice, but I think really the disappointment of this one kind of threw me off of this one. I need to keep using this because it is a pretty blush, but this one is ridiculous. It's a, a travesty. <laughs> of a product, okay? I feel like it should never have been made. I just don't understand who they think is going to use this as a blush. I mean, I've seen a couple of people saying that they could use it as a highlight, and I understand. I mean, that's a way that if you've already spent 50 pounds of your flipping money on it, that's a way to maybe try to get some use out of it. But if you're gonna call something a blush, to me, it needs to give someone on this earth blush some colour to the cheeks. Otherwise it's not a blush and I don't know what's happening. So I can only apologise that this video ended up being three and a half hours long. I just, I feel like I had a lot of rambling today and I can only apologise. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a little bit cold in here and I'm just trying to talk a lot to warm myself up. I don't know. Can't explain it. I'm so sorry. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I would love to see you in the next one when I promise to talk less. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.